Main man, main man here. Y'all know how I get down. We talking boxing, man. So it's official, ladies and gentlemen. They're saying that Deontay Wilder will now go on to face Gerald Washington, ladies and gentlemen. Gerald Washington, six foot six. Gerald Washington, eighteen and zero, twelve knockouts, one draw. Now, the the from what I've seen of Gerald Washington. I'm going to say that Deontay Wilder is going to beat that boy like he stole something. This is not a detriment at all to Gerald Washington. Gerald Washington just is not. He's he's a decent fighter, I guess. He's rated by in the top 10 of the boxing rankings. Uh, according to Boxing.com, they have him at number 10 exactly. I don't know what the other ones got him at, but he's rated... I guess in the top 10 to top 15 of heavyweight fighters, which is usually the requirement of the WBC champion. If you're going to be champion, you have to face someone in the top 15. And this is the guy that they can find on such short notice when uh, Deontay Wilder's last opponent, Warzik or whatever his name was, um, popped up dirty for PEDs, man. And they uh, found Gerald Washington on such short notice. But um, from what, like I said before, man, from what I've seen on Gerald Washington, he going to get beat down, man. Like, uh, my first takeaways about Gerald Washington, we all know who Deontay Wilder is, but my first takeaways about Gerald Washington is, man, for one, stamina. Stamina is a major issue for this dude, man. Um, out of all of his, what, 12 knockouts, none of them has been passed like the sixth round. Whenever he goes into the deep waters, his punch output drops dramatically, and he basically, he's, he's running on films at that point, you know. When I looked at the entire fight between him and Amir Mansour, whom technically is probably his hardest opponent up to date and uh that fight was fought to a draw that's the one draw that a dude has in his uh on his record and you know that fight showed me that this dude not only does he tire later on in the fight but he throws a bunch of looping punches that can be very detrimental um, um on top of that he uses his footwork well, at least with the shorter fighter, way too much. That says a lot about his boxing IQ. Um, I thought he was backing away from Amir Mansour just like way too much when he stood and started controlling him with the jab early on. Though he did start to do that, do that during the fight. But um, the dude just looked hand speed, looked slow. Punches didn't look as crisp. Um, none of the fights. I looked at the Eddie Chambers fight also, man. Once again, punches didn't ne look nearly as crisp. Um, this guy, you know, he, he's, I mean, if up and coming, you know, if he was going up against a lower, much, maybe a B to C plus level fighter, I would say, yeah, I give him a much better chance. But at this particular level with this much short notice, I, I don't think the guy has a chance at all. He will be fighting in the backyard of Deontay Wilder. This fight will be going down in uh, Alabama. And, you know, I'm just... You know, the best thing that they're going to have to sell this fight is that the dude looked like he should give Deontay Wilder some go. He, he's six foot six. He's a big boy with an 82 inch reach. I mean, he's a big boy, 63 percent knockout ratio. He looks very intimidating. He looks like a dude who would get in there and really give Deontay Wilder a run for his money. I mean, as far as, you know, conditioning is concerned, he looked like he's pretty solid, but he looks that way. But, I mean, he's not nearly as tough as he looks, and I don't think nearly as good a shape as he looks. And, you know, clearly, quite clearly, you know, he's just not of that pedigree. You know what I mean? Um, now, I'm not going to hold this against Deontay Wilder. You know, some people may. You know, I've already had my videos in the past about Deontay Wilder, in which I said I would love to see this dude step the fuck up. And we, compared to what Anthony Joshua is doing, what Deontay Wilder is doing to me right now is fucking laughable. You know what I mean? But um, given he's coming off the bicep injury and the hand injury, and he's been inactive for so long, and he's looking to really test and see how strong his hand and his bicep is uh, in competition, Petition, I, me, I'm willing to give him a pass on this particular opponent. Um, but however, after this fight on down, I mean, you know, dang to me, you got to go to the big fights. But I gave on um, Deontay Wilder a bunch of shit 
um, for that fight against Chris Ariola because I thought though he did not get the Alexander Povetkin fight, I said to myself, why the fuck was he fighting Chris Ariola, man? That was just a worthless fight that I would have rather for him to have set out before he sit sit here and risk an injury. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what the fuck happened—a goddamn injury. So um, that had me questioning Wilder. Then I'm not willing to give him much shit due to a legitimate bicep injury, and that's a serious fucking injury, ladies and gentlemen. The man arm looked like a flat tire you know what i mean so given that that injury to me was extremely legit and yes he does should get a soft touch when you're coming off such an injury and a long layoff as deontay wilder is man so for that factor alone he gets a pass from me for this particular fight it's going to be fun i guess to see deontay wilder knock out gerald washington i'm gonna go ahead and get the prediction out the way right fucking now deontay wilder six round stoppage if deontay wilder is smart Honestly, if he doesn't want to overwork himself, all he had to do is just take Gerald Washington to the deep waters, take him to about the seventh, eighth round, and then knock him out. It would be much more easier to do. And at that point, honestly, Gerald Washington is not much of a threat to Deontay Wilder, given the way he fights and given his stamina rate, in my opinion. So sixth, seventh, eighth round knockout by Deontay Wilder, easy. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see how well that Deontay Wilder's bicep puts up. Because if Wilder loses a fight due to an injury, no Nobody ain't giving him a pass for that shit, bro. I mean, I'm honest with you, the boxing public and the boxing critic is going to come down hard on Deontay Wilder, even if he loses with an injury. So, fact still remains, Gerald Washington, Deontay Wilder, we have that is the official now. They have found the replacement opponent on short notice for Deontay Wilder, and this is the guy that they found. Anyone who's wondering who the fuck is this guy, uh, do your homework. It ain't really much to look at, but do your homework. I mean, real shit. I mean, prior to his last fight, uh, shit, I think he fought uh, Ray Austin. I didn't even know Ray Austin was still fucking fighting, man. This dude, like, damn near 50 years old. And uh, prior to that, of course, you know, he had the Amir Mansour fight. And then uh, prior to that, I think he fought, like, Jason Gavin. Jason Gavin's like, every bit of a 1,000 pounds overweight. You know what I'm saying? So whatever the fuck, man. Gerald Washington, Deontay Wilder. Get it out the way, get it on and popping so we can get a very quality and viable opponent in there with Deontay Wilder. And I can't wait till it happens. To the next video, Main Man Made Man. Don't forget to subscribe. Twitter, Made Man 511. Facebook, Main Man Made Man Boxing Forum. Google Plus, Main Man Made Man. I hope I'm not shitting too much on Gerald Washington because quite honestly, he is undefeated. Though he has yet to step in there with elite competition. But he is undefeated. And, um, you know, he just hey, getting in where he fits in, man. But... Uh, clearly not the caliber we will desire to see Deontay Wilder get in there with, but we got to give him this fight right here, ladies and gentlemen, because, hey, the dude is coming off a serious fucking injury. To the next video. Peace out.